I want to introduce, well, well, we'll practice with an idea that, that you've been working on and start to introduce one new idea, which is, which is really the last idea, new idea I think that we'll have in, in 7b. Although, we'll, we'll be practicing with these ideas for quite a while and, and sometimes under slightly different names, but, but really the, the physics is going to end up um, all having been described to you this week and next Monday. So by next Monday, I think we will have completed the physics of what's going on uh, this quarter. And, and just to remind you, in, in 7a, you talked about energy transfers. Objects could interact with each other and transfer energy back and forth. And so far, uh, lately, in 7b, we've been talking about another kind of result of interactions. So forces describe interactions between objects. That's the, the way we talk about uh, how my hand interacts with this block is my hand pushes upward on this block. There's a force by my hand on the block and it's upward. And if I push harder, then I can actually change its momentum upward. So that's how we describe the interaction. Uh, in, in 7a, you worked with the idea of work as being basically a force force acting on an object times the distance over which the force acted. So that was an energy transfer Force acting on something times the distance over which it acts. In, in 7b, we have a different, a different version of that. Actually, a very, it's a very different version. It's a very different thing. If a force acts on something for some time, then it will transfer momentum. The total momentum change is the result of all of the forces that are acting for that amount of time. So this delta PA, the total momentum of some object, the change in the total momentum of some object depends on the sum of all the forces acting on that object and the time over which they act. Delta T is the time over which that interaction happens. So this is, this momentum transfer is what's going on here, is a lot like an energy transfer. They're kind of analogs of each other. They're certainly very different quantities. Um, energy can be, energy is measured in, for one thing, energy is measured in joules and momentum is not. You can tell the units of momentum are the units of force, which is newtons times the units of time, which is seconds, and the units of energy is, are the units of force, newtons, and the units of distance, meters. So, so energy, a joule is a newton meter. We actually don't have a special unit for momentum, so newton seconds is fine. Kilograms meters per second turns out to be the same thing. The momentum is mass times the velocity, so kilogram meters per second is a unit for that. And, and so that tells you about how interactions between my hand and this thing uh, can, can lead to momentum changes. One other thing went on there. I have a hard time not including that other thing. If I try really hard, I can basically just throw this thing up in the air. But what I usually do when I throw it up in the air 
is, is I end up making it spin also. And, and spinning, I can make it fly through the air, but it spins the whole way. Spinning is something that we're going to talk about, start talking about uh, at the end of the day today and, and practice a lot more in a week. So angular momentum, which is a, a rotational momentum, is coming up, and, and that'll be the last kind of uh, conservation law that we're going to talk about, the last kind of physical quantity that can get transferred between things because of interactions. How many of you have heard of angular momentum, heard those words together? How many of you have taken chemistry and not heard the words angular momentum? Okay. How many of you have taken chemistry and have not heard the word electron spin? Okay. Spin is, uh, is when something's rotating, that's angular momentum. So I, I just want to point out that as we come into angular momentum, your ideas should be uh, in, in your background is not just things rotating, but uh, electrons essentially rotating because they have angular momentum or electrons going around a nucleus so it can have angular momentum because it's going around something. So those things ought to be in your mind uh, kind of off and on trying to make sense of all of this stuff. <coughs>